Hey everyone, so today is going to be a little bit more of a political situation. If you don't like that, click away. I won't be offended. However, it's something that I feel like is very important and needs to be drawn attention to. So without further ado, today we're going to be talking about what's going on in Zimbabwe. If you see my eyes drifting off to the side, I'm looking at notes and also I'm going off of some information in the CNN article. Uh, but a lot of this is from memory of reading different articles and like staying up to date on things. So if you've never heard of Zimbabwe, it's a country in Africa. It's actually um, located by Zambia and Botswana. If I pronounced that wrong, I'm so sorry. Please correct me and teach me the right way. And I apologize ahead of time if I'm going to butcher any of these people's names. Like I said, feel free to correct me. I am still learning. So, essentially, what's going on? The Zimbabwean government is corrupt, is what it really boils down to, but let's get into the entire story. So, there was a former president, and his name was um, <clears throat> Robert Mugabe, and he had served for actually 37 years, so a really long time, and he had stepped down and he had actually passed away like a couple months ago. I remember seeing that. <clears throat> Pardon me. So he had um, stepped down in around 2017. And this actually made a lot of people super happy. Like very, very happy. Because government was already corrupt and they thought, okay, maybe like we're going to get a better situation. However, that was not the case. One of... The most important people throughout this whole entire thing that's going on is a guy by the name of Evan Mug Mugawir. Again, like I said, please, you know, correct me. He was actually the founder of hashtag this flag movement, and he had basically wrapped himself with the Zimbabwean flag and had called to people saying, hey, the Zimbabwean government, like, needs to be held accountable for everything and this needs to be fixed you know this is a very corrupt government so uh, that had happened in 2016 and he was actually um detained because they basically said dude you're trying to basically cause an uprising and cause you know violence to go on and basically said that he was trying to create violence against the government uh so that's what was happening however he was like released like a day later <clears throat> and sorry my mouth is like really dry so sorry if i'm like clearing my throat a lot so n today they have a new leader which i'll talk about him momentarily his name is emerson Maganagua. And things have gotten much worse since he has served. In fact, CNN says right here that the inflation has gone to around 300%. That is a lot. So there is just a lot going on there right now. And he has charged so many people for it's just as simple as you know saying hey the government needs to be fixed he has charged people for that like this is basically you know essentially a dictatorship so moving on the guy that i was addressing earlier mawari he had actually been sent to like a jail type environment back in around January I want to say so it was actually sent there and they basically had said you cannot do that and he was it's because he had posted a video they were on like a fuel strike type thing and he had posted a video saying hey this isn't cool like gas prices, like, fuel is cost is super high, and they charged him and another guy, I think his name is, like, Peter Matsawa or something, they had charged 
them both with basically like speaking out against the government and like thinking that they were trying and like everything that goes with that. So he was actually released um, on what's known as bail around two weeks after that happened. And then moving on, he uh, basically still has to go to, I think that he's still waiting for trial right now. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's as far as what I know is going on. Let's get into some different details. Bear with. <clears throat> Okay, so basically there's, um, despite these two leaders, things are definitely bad in their own worst ways. Like it's, things were crappy when the first leader was in power, but things are even more crappy. Like there's just no winning for this and the really scary thing, though, is that the current president, Managawaga, he is gearing up to basically kill the, the civilians. And this is the scariest thing because he's, you know, beginning to prepare the military and send out, you know, people to shoot the protesters. That's a really scary thing. And he has actually managed to do that um twice in the past two years that's very scary and i'm referencing the cnn article now it says at least 12 people were killed and 78 people were treated for the gunshot um injuries back in january so it's uh just absolutely devastating and there's actually been it says right here around two more than 240 incidents as of assault and torture and hundreds and hundreds of arrests primarily because he thinks that they are trying to attempt to overthrow the government and i mean at this point like i don't blame them because this government like i said it's very corrupt um so that leads us into the next thing a lot of things like a lot of zimbabweans at this point they feel you know very hopeless they feel like nothing is going to get better from there especially because you know there's things like the employment rate is the unemployment rate is super super bad there and you know i can only you know use deductive reasoning to figure out why as well as you know there's uh cuts that are being made daily to things like power and necessities that they need there's hunger crises going on there's like millions and millions of people who are you know starving and you know depend on human humanitarian assistance demand like depend on people helping them so that is essentially what's going on and i want you to know how to help them if you would feel so compelled to help them and have it in your heart to there's actually a website called aidforafrica.org and they work very closely with zimbabwe and get them the resources that they need like referencing the site right now because that's literally what i'm looking at they help women and families they help them really like a lot of people you know escape poverty and you know they are working to expand the educational aspects and try to create more businesses for more jobs and stuff and so they work very closely so I hope that you have learned more throughout this video and I just hope that if you if you can't do that, if you can't help, maybe just share the video or share what's going on in Zimbabwe because the more people that hear about it, 
the more that I think will be done about it. And I just felt like it was so important to address this situation. And I plan to make more videos like this because I am somebody who considers myself an activist and I constantly, you know, I try to stay up to date on everything. It's almost impossible to stay up to date on everything, but this kind of hits home for me because about a couple of years ago, I had done a DNA test and genetically, like, I am a percentage of Zimbabwean and I've never been there, but I just felt really compelled and connected to the story and to know that people are going through this, it just, it hurts. It hurts because you think, what can you do to help? But like I said, again, Aid for Africa, and there are tons and tons of other resources. However, I cannot link them all below, so I'll just do Aid for Africa. But if you would like to do a Google search and, you know, find one that better suits your needs, that's totally fine. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. Well, that feels like a weird thing to say. I hope that you learned something from this video and that you, you know, I know that reading throughout everything and educating myself on this, I will never, ever take um, anything for granted. And I will continue fighting for people's rights is what it basically boils down to. So I will see you in the next video and I hope you all have a great day.